2020 uh, athletic code meeting. I'm hard to believe that we're hitting 2020 already. Those parents that have been around for quite a while and remember the 90s, and went to school in the 90s or the 80s or whatever, time goes pretty fast. Uh, so we hit 2020 uh, at, the, at the year, uh, halfway through the school year. So today we're going to start with a little presentation by five of our students. Uh, each year the Global Health Conference puts together a scholarship slash leadership conference. Uh, it's in uh, Oscar Fairchild. This year it was in October. Uh, there were six students that went there and learned a bunch of things. And they are going to come and present some of the stuff that they learned on sportsmanship, teamwork, um, all kinds of things. So I'm going to turn it over. We've got uh, Ariel Order is not here today, but filling in for, I think Alex is taking most of her slides. So we got Alex Sackett, Emma Ryan, Luke Olson, Jenna Volroth, and Bryce Kula. So we give them a round of applause. Welcome. Lead by example, 
you need to be a trustworthy person and someone that is trusted to make the right decision. Responsibility. A student athlete, we have to be responsible for our work and action. Like getting homework done on time, following the guidelines of the athletic code, being engaged at school and at practice, meet all behavior expectations at school and in practice. Off-season training. Off-season training is very important to train your body in the off-season in order to get bigger, faster, stronger, and overall more athletic. Making team workouts, but to make a plan get in the weight room, whether it is before or after school, keep yourself conditioned and in shape, work on your individual skills like ball handling, hitting, throwing, and all that stuff. Encourage and hold your teammates accountable for athletic and skill training. Be positive, encourage each other. When you guys get hyped, the crowd gets hyped, and then everybody gets into it. And always turn a negative into a positive. Um, have trust in your teammates. It helps avoid hostility, and trust helps motivate the team. All right, so then team chemistry. To achieve team tennis, team tennis three, you have to have loyalty and cooperation. And then playing into cooperation, you have to work together to achieve the same goal. And a quote from the legend Michael Jordan is, talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. Basically that means that you're good if you have a lot of talent, but if you have talent and you can work together, then you'll win championships. You're great. Alright, team over self. We have to be reliable, does more than ask, adapts quickly. If you be committed to the team, you have to take credit as one team. And another quote is, trust is that knowing that when a team member does push you, they're doing this because they care about the team. An example of this is, a coach is yelling in your ear, it's not because they want to pick a fight with you, it's because they just want, they just want to see your true potential. Adios. <laughs> Nice job, everybody. Uh, the, the beauty of this here is there wasn't a lot of guidance in this presentation. We met a few times, and this is what they talk, thought was important and things that they thought that they should share with other student athletes in their school uh, and things that they feel would help our programs grow and improve and, and help each and every one of us. So let's give them a round, another round of applause. All right, you have, there's five things that you need to turn in. I'm just going to go through them. So if you have those sheets, um, you with you. If you haven't, you can pick them up over there. These all, all of these forms need to be read, signed, and turned in before the first day of practice. We do this in the spring, just to get ahead of the game, and hopefully we get a lot of this paperwork in um, by the end of the school year. But you need a physical or an all-time year card. Miss um, Kathy Zink is our assistant, or is our administrator. She's Oh, there she is. Why don't you step out here, Kathy, just so you give her a round of applause. She does a lot of work with all this stuff. Now, let's have a stop. If you have any questions on whether your child needs an alternate or a physical, you can go and get a hold, get a hold of her, either call the school or email her. Uh, but don't, you have one, you need one of those each year. You need your uh, athletic emergency card, your extracurricular code agreement. Both sides need to be signed. That's basically the athletic code after you've read through everything. And then concussion agreements for both the parents and the students. So there's a parent informational sheet with a signature page that's over there, and then the same thing for the students. So you need both of those in, and then there's a HIPAA form that we have everybody fill out uh, just in case there are things that come up and we need to make sure that we have information and they're allowed to be seen by our training. So those are all items that need to be in before uh, the first day of practice. And then, of course, anything that the coaches would need you to have in as far as the team is concerned. Uh, they did a great job of explaining a lot of these things, and I'm definitely not going to read through the whole athletic code. So what I'm going to do is kind of highlight a few things. There's really kind of four sections in there. Academics, they talked about already. I would add one thing about the academics. Once you get through serving 10% or going through the mid-court, you have to be passing all of your classes after that. So the idea is that you kind of get put on probation, and then we need to make sure that we're passing all of our classes. At the, on the back side of your athletic code, there is 
AWI insert that we're required to put in, that outlines the minimums and has a lot to do with transfers and other things that are in there. So please make sure you take a look at that as well. Attendance, they kind of put everything there. That's kind of what's written in our athletic code. So if there is a situation where, let's say, you got a dentist appointment the day of a game or day of practice, call in, um, let us know what's going on, and it'll get approved. But just make sure we're communicating the, uh, that as far as attendance is concerned. Uh, the thought, I guess, would be when this was put together that if somebody's too sick to come to school, if it's an illness thing, then that's probably not a good reason not to be practicing or playing a game as well. The other two things, and they did a great job of outlining the effects of several substances, but there's a substance section in there. So if there's a substance violation, uh, that it would be 20% of the, the season the first time there's a substance violation, it's 50 the second time, and then it's a full year the third time. So not only do we have that in the code and you're signing a pledge as an athlete at Fall Creek not to engage in any of those activities, you can also see by what they put together it affects your performance as well. Quite, quite a bit. I thought that was an excellent addition from what we had before. Uh, so, those are, are, I mean, it's in there. Jewels, vapes, uh, tobacco, alcohol, drugs, all that stuff. You can't be around it, you can't be using it. Um, so I guess I don't have to talk a whole lot about that. Uh, conduct is something also that's in there. We have a conduct policy for behavior that is unbecoming of an athlete or different types of suspendable offenses that come up. That pretty much is a 10% violation the first time, 20 the second time, 50 the third time, and the fourth time is a full year as well. So it's, it's a different section in there. They're all kind of split up differently and have different um, consequences, I guess. I, I encourage you to just look through that and read that, but I've kind of just summarized everything for you as well. So those are the four main areas. Uh, the other thing we do have that's really kind of an academic thing is we have an academic integrity clause in there that if there's any academic fraud or any issues with cheating or anything like that, that's 10% of the season. Uh, if there's anything like that that comes up, which uh, that is the issue. Uh, if you have concerns as a parent or an athlete when talking with our coaches, the first thing that I would encourage you to do is have your son or daughter talk, ask the question to the coach, uh, see if it's about playing time or not knowing what the expectation is, have that conversation first. Uh, if after that there's still some unresolved issues or something like that, then I would encourage you to talk to the coach at time and field, set up an appointment and stuff and, and talk about it. Our coaches are very receptive of listening and trying to understand. Obviously, they're in charge of 30, 40, 20, whatever students, and they're trying to do what they can to allow everybody to develop. So they're going to have a perspective. They're also at practice. But if you want to ask questions, I encourage you to do that as well. If there's still further issues after that, then feel free to give me a call or email me and you know, I sit down and, and have a chat. The other thing that I need to make sure that I touch on here is, oh, our meetings. After we're done here, we have a meeting set up except for middle school football. I think middle school football is all taken care of. Uh, after we get done, we're going to split up the football. Anybody in high school football can stay in here. The library will be for cross country, volleyball. Coach Wall Leitner's room. Okay, I lied. It's Coach Wall Leitner's room. Football will be in Coach Wall Lightner's room. Uh, volleyball will be in the middle school gym. Cross country will be in the library. And middle school volleyball will be in the choir room. So they will go through expectations as far as the team's concerned, schedules and things like that. So we're all ready to get our and come back in August. And the last thing that I want to mention is, obviously you see a lot of construction and things all about the building. Our cottons looks more like a kind of a shop area than it does the cottons right now. But all this stuff is set to be, is on track to be set up when we start the season. So weight room and things like that should be ready to go once we start football practice and beyond. Uh, and then they'll be finishing up the interior of the school and everything should be ready to go once we get back. Uh, I should not have what we're ready to start the regular piece. All right, when we get back, uh, and I appreciate all the patience of all the students, all the parents and all the teachers through this construction area, it's construction time. Today they were, uh, cutting the concrete right behind that wall that's there, and that was uh, interesting. Let's put it interesting. That was a, that was a nice, solid sound going through all the whole building. So everybody has been very patient, uh, and the move, we're moving a lot of stuff here and there, uh, and it's going it's to be really neat once it gets done. It's just that this has been a bit of an adverse time. So again, yeah, I appreciate everybody's flexibility and understanding of that. So, if anybody has any questions for me specifically, they can come and chat with me. Otherwise, at this time, grab any forms that you don't have already, and then you can go ahead and split into those areas that we set up, and have a great rest of the day.